important things that I should have got because I went to school. It'll be one of my talents, so I might be like 40. I'm like, I'm the last one. And by the way, Remember the John Young discussion with us and when you see that we're in front of my talking about these really unique looking speakers over here. But this is all part of our experience and we want to support our sponsors because they were nice enough to put their time and their money into coming out and seeing us and teaching us about different things, what have you. So for the next half hour or so, Jay's going to be talking about this. We saw this, what did you, what, you said February when you came out with this. Info council, anyone else? June. No, that would have been. Infocom, I think, is June, isn't it? Maybe it was really, but yeah, I saw that, I think I saw you in Atlantic City with this, and I'm like, what is that strange thing that man has over there? And it turns out it was a sound system in there. They're really quite cool after you get to listen to them. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce Jay from Dumb Pro. Hi. If anyone's visited the website, they've seen these four images shown over and over again. These four images basically mean what are the different categories and channels that Don Carlotta wants to go after. So, in today's presentation, since we're a new company, we kind of uh, look like the new sports car, but we just don't know where to go to really race our car. I figured we'd take a little bit of time on the front end of this presentation, let you guys know who is Don, give you a little bit of the company history, um, take a look at what we aim to accomplish as a company. Product range overview, real world applications, because that's the part that actually matters. The concept products, meaning what's going to be coming in 2014. Uh, role of Bluetooth, just to give you a little bit of a hint, that is in 2014. And then finally, where to find us. So, let's jump into who is Dawn Pro Audio. We'll get all the secrets out of the way. Uh, Dawn Pro Audio is a division of Hansel Music Group. Answer Music Group is a company that's been around since 1924. Uh, we've kind of focused on distribution, fulfillment, manufacturing, and marketing. So each one of the brands that you see up here is either a brand that the uh, Answer Music Group owns, manufactures, or distributes exclusively in the world. So, BC Rich Guitars, for all the metalheads out there, Carrie King, Slayer fans, there you have it. Custom. If anybody remembers the old tuck and roll speakers and the Johnny Cash play, that was us. Uh, Powerworks, a very similar product to what you see. Uh, obviously, we've added a few bells and whistles to the dog product that we'll go over. But uh, long and short, there it is. This is the Dev Enhancer Music Company. This is where Dawn Pro Audio actually started. This is 1952, I believe. Um, on the far left, you have John Hanser. He is the grandfather, the man who started the business in 1924. To his right is Jack Hanser Sr. He uh, obviously is standing next to uh, John Davitt, 
So that's where the data enhancer name comes around and uh, ultimately enhancer music. This is ownership as it sits today. Three brothers, so just to give you an idea, we are still a small company. It might not look like it, uh, but it's family owned, it's family run, and those are my three bosses. So I'm sure they're all sitting there watching uh, you know, the live stream of this to say, is he doing a good job? Is he <laughs> exactly. This is the building. Um, we are located in Eber, Kentucky. It's just on the opposite side of Cincinnati. Um, so everyone understands we have a team of uh, five engineers, both audio engineers, um, graphic engineers. They work in a separate building which is housed within this building. So separate foundations, separate power grids, so we can do all manners of testing, prototyping, uh, basically rapid prototyping in a matter of three to four weeks to get product on. Here's the interesting part. This is our own factory, which is located in Hangzhou, China. So again, rapid prototyping done in the States, all manufactured in Asia. So not pulling any punches, there it is. This was a joint venture uh, done in 2005, where the only products that are manufactured in that facility are the ones that we dictate or say yes, we would like you to have. You know, ultimately create an OEM opportunity where we can manufacture uh, other brands. This is located in uh, central China. I've been there three different times. So if anybody ever orders tea or actually buys tea, look on the box and odds are it comes from Hangzhou. So that's what our factory is located. History on what Don was. 1984, a gentleman by the name of Don Friedman uh, created satellite speakers. They were uh, ultimately 180 degrees worth of sound dispersion. There was a 200 watt sub, very much like we, what we have today, except the subwoofer in the 80s is actually what encompassed uh, all your channel inputs. So we've changed that around a little bit. But there's a shot of what Dawn used to be. Uh, more history, they licensed the brand for distribution to Gibson Guitars. And in uh, 93, I believe it was, uh, Gibson gave the brand back to Don. We as Hanson Music Group at that time purchased it. So it's uh, basically laid dormant for a number of years until we figured out the time it was right. So let's talk about what we're aiming to really accomplish as a company. Uh, obviously, we looked at the DJ market at the top of the year and said, this is a good fit for this brand. Uh, we went to several shows and I'm still learning because I went to a DJ show thinking, okay, we're talking about DJs. I had no difference, there was a difference between a club DJ, a mobile DJ, uh, what those sound requirements were, what they were gonna want as a potential consumer. Wedding services also ties into what you guys are doing. Uh, ultimately, giving someone a small portable package to really not take away from the event. I think that's what we're really all trying to do, acting as a DJ. Uh, you want to be heard, but not necessarily seen. Hence the aesthetic and the profile of what we're trying to do with brand. Public speaking events, if I was speaking through mine right now, I would have just hit three out of three. But since I'm not. <laughs> and then number four, when we're all done, if you guys actually want to hit all four out of four, we can, we can do some yoga. But basically, those were the four different, four different <laughs> channels that we were really trying to get ourselves involved with. So, we took those four channels and then asked ourselves the question, what is happening with today's modern consumer? It's a matter of portability, lightweight, scalability. Um, ultimately, we looked at you know, the mobile phone market. We took a lot of the ideas and the designs incorporated in the uh, aesthetic that you see today. And ultimately said, let's incorporate the look, the vibe of those phones into these channels. And ultimately, that's what we ended up with. So, now we're into the product portion. T100. Basically, a 100 watt tower. Most people have looked at this tower and told me that's not enough power for what I need. Fair enough. Um, big difference is I'm going to rate everything RMS. I'm not going to give you peak music power. I'm not going to tell you what my speakers can go to before they blow up. I'm going to tell you what my speakers can do, basically running for months and months and months and months. So, let's take a look at product features. Basically, 100 watt RMS. Um, this system contains four. 50 watt speakers, they're four and a half inch. Uh, there is also one inch compression driver, which you'll see at the top, 
It's a neodymium magnet. Uh, for anybody who knows, that substance and material is very difficult to come by today. And that's why you actually get the sound level and clarity that you hear, um, or will hear, later tonight when they do the uh, speaker uh, showcase. Here's a little bit of info as far as the range of the speaker itself. Um, each one of the units from the 100 watts and the 50 watts both have the built-in crossover. So what that means is they'll run full range if you don't have the bottoms, or if you want to go ahead and plug it into the subwoofer active crossover, you don't have to worry about making any adjustments on your highs, mids, lows. Dimensions of the product itself, as you can see, uh, it's over there on those two towers. Very light, very small scale, uh, ultimately built so that you can hide it. So again, like I said, when you're at an event, when you're hosting a wedding, when you're the DJ at a wedding, you don't want your speaker boxes to get in the way. You want them to be able to, obviously, do what they're supposed to do, make people dance. So. Finally, um, 24 and a half pounds integrated handle. So integrated carrying handle on the top, extremely lightweight to move through. Here's a shot of the back of the speaker so that you guys understand. Um, already has your mixer built in. So we have three different channels. First two are gonna end up being uh, both line level inputs, meaning a quarter inch or a balanced XLR. Third channel is actually an auxiliary. That is a stereo eighth inch jack. Uh, each one of the channels, regardless of those three, has a high, a low, and then its own independent uh, volume control. There's a master volume control on each, and we'll talk about that here in a minute. Subwoofer out, system link in, system link out. That will come up in about another four minutes when we get to scalability. So here's its little brother, a 50 watt tower. As you can see, designed aesthetically pretty much the same as the 100 watt, just uh, much more mobile package. Definitely intended for voice, more so than it is intended for live music. Uh, I'll give you a couple of applications of where we think that's going to work as far as what you guys are doing with your businesses shortly. Uh, again, 20 millimeter titanium dome tweeter, so it's a little bit different than the horn we're offering in the 100, which is again why I say it's more built for voice than it is going to be built for music. Back, exactly the same. So again, three channels, same channels, same level controls, same volume controls. Uh, and ultimately, same uh, system link in and out. Finally, this is the part that uh, makes everybody shake their booty, so to speak, or at least, you know, the wedding party get up and dance. Uh, Subwoofer. So, 200 watts RMS, it's housed with a 12-inch speaker. Uh, all the speakers, just so you know, are of uh, proprietary design. We do manufacture these. Integrated handle, 44 pounds. So compared to competition, 44 pounds, 24 and a half pounds, 15 pounds on 50 watt. As you can see, we're trying to be extremely portable, extremely lightweight, and easy for you guys to load in and out of the car. As a point of reference, everything I brought with me fits into the back of the Civic, uh, so you don't have to own a Tahoe anymore to get your gear to and from your gig. So <laughs> there's your uh, there's everything you need to have one side. So it's basically a tower, a line level input to get from your tower down to your sub, speaker pole, uh, and the sub. All right, so what is System Link? This is the uh, easiest way to explain it. It's nothing more than an XLR input and output. Uh, we have done some interesting things with the ground loop that are proprietary, so I won't give you too much information, but long and short, you can continually process a signal uh, if you decide to ground your signal in a different manner. So it's legal, we're not doing anything bad, it's just our engineers thought of it. Hey, what the hell, let's put it to use. So, to me, system link actually means scalability. Um, you've heard people before mention that, especially in the tech giants of today's world. We want our company to be scalable. That means as you grow, so can your system. Um, as it relates to you guys independently, as your audience grows, as your business grows, so can the system. I think you'll find once we get to the price points, it's not an arm and a leg, but it's pretty easy to build a system depending on the size of the room you are in and the number of people that are going to be at your event. So let's have a little fun with scalability. There's a side, 100 watt tower, 200 watt cell. What I do is add a plus sign. So one side, add in a microphone cable, and what that means is now, you can go to this, and or you can go to this, and or you can go to this, I think you guys get the idea, uh, and or you can go to this. So ultimately, depending on the size of the room, you can link together as many of these as you want. 
Uh, as a point of reference, there is a 3 dB signal loss when you actually run with an XLR cable. So it's not something that we're really going to hear unless you're testing for it. However, um, just know that it's there. So this is the fun part, scalability in the actual application. Um, you know, I'm going to tell you right now, I am not a graphic designer by any means, so please don't laugh. But these are the images I can come up with, okay? So let's just take for an instance and say this is your wedding party. Um, we have, you know, obviously yourself sitting behind the two uh, Dawn speakers. Here comes, here comes the introduction of the wedding party. They're happy, they want to dance, they want to have a great time. Um, you know, next, da, 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 here comes the bride and groom. So you do your introductions and you say to yourself, okay, let's, let's take a look at the size of this actual party. Um, we're talking about 150 people here, you know, so figure that you got 10 people in each one of those tables. This is what I'm going to suggest is a left and a right if you're going to have a room of 150 people or less that works indoor and outdoor. Now, let's go ahead and say we need to double that. Here's, here's where it gets fun. Oh, you're not going to see it. Well, I guess you can. Let's see. Can you see the two speakers on the top that just popped in? All you need is your XLR cable and run out each side. So, yeah, sorry, I, I guess I'm overstepping my bounds, so to speak, on this side. We can do the same thing again. Obviously, as the room grows, so can your system. Now, this is, this is where it gets really fun. Inevitably, everybody's going to be having a great time. Everybody's going to be dancing. Uh, but who's this guy? That's, that's Grandpa. He, he doesn't like loud music, right? Does that happen all the time? It's too loud. I don't want to hear that. So that's where the independent master volume controls come in. Each one of those systems that you have set out on the floor will basically have a master volume control that you get to dictate on the system itself. It has no effect on any other tower. So in that scenario, if Grandpa's really pissed off in the bottom right corner, because you know, that's where he's going to end up sitting as close to the head table as possible, you just turn his tower down. Everything else still runs at the sound and the level of sound that you choose. So. All right, line array. Yes, no, maybe. Uh, we all know who my competition is. Uh, it's, it's pretty broad, to be honest with you. There's a lot of guys out there that are doing the portable PA thing right now and doing a really good job at it. Uh, you know, there are line array companies. We don't want to mix the lines too much. Uh, because here's a shot where we are a line array uh, company in the fact that we have our speakers in a line. We are not directing them in different patterns. So as far as the audio signal that you're going to hear, um, I'm not going to spend too much time on it, at least in the presentation, but just so that you guys want to have a comparison, um, we've done all the testing as far as horizontal, vertical, different angles, so that if you want to see how this compares to any other major competitor of ours, we can give you a, a very good apples to apples comparison. So everything's done, uh, one watt to one meter, here's your horizontal test, here's your vertical test. So for the techies, for the engineers that are out there and actually want to put our product through the paces, uh, I am not the guy to talk to, but I can put you in touch with the guy to talk to. Okay, getting into new product ranges. Uh, this is not available today. Uh, long and short, it won't be available until the FCC gives me my uh, official okay. So to do anything wirelessly, as you know, companies like Sure, Audio Technica, anyone who's, who's dealing with a wireless signal, you have, to, you have to fall within a specific frequency band. Bluetooth is no different. That's what we're going through right now. Uh, rumor has it that on Friday we actually received our okay to start our Bluetooth production. Uh, what that means is that you probably won't see this product available until February or March of 2014 at best. Bluetooth in its own right kind of has a bad vibe. Um, the majority of the Bluetooth products that came out were generally placed in a class one, or I'm sorry, class two or class three. Uh, that has to deal with the rating of the distance from your transmitter to your receiver. So you guys understand and why it's bolded up there. All of the power or uh, Dawn products are going to fall into class two. So that means we will rate it up to 33 feet. I can tell you for certain that we can get a heck of a lot farther than 33 feet. Uh, because we've tested it, we've tested it in each trade show in our warehouses. Uh, so you have, you have a bit more, I guess you could say, uh, mobility at the gate. There's the FCC testing portion. 
one question that we got of each one of the trade shows that we've attended so far is how do I incorporate this into my existing rig? Um, you know, I am running my sound, what you'll hear me do today, not during this presentation, but I'll just hook up Bluetooth with my cell phone. I can walk around the room, I can play anything I want through a phone, through an iPad, anything that has that wireless capability. Uh, a lot of DJs obviously don't want to try and move all of their CDs, all their records, all their digital files from a computer, from that CD rack, into something that's that portable. So the easy version is, as you see down here, Bluetooth transmitters that actually plug into your existing console that'll act as a transmitter to our receiver, which you're going to find in the back of those towers. So if it's technology you want to have just to incorporate on a small level, it exists for as little as $19.99. You can spend upwards of $69 if you want to um, for a transmitter device that falls into that class 2 range. So. Oh, I went too fast. Okay. I'm only going to do this because some people have asked me, okay, how do I even set up Bluetooth? This is my really slow, crappy iPhone 3G, as you can see, so it's the original version. Uh, long and short version, you see settings. Everybody knows where their settings is on their smartphone. You click on settings and it's going to take you over to the general portion. You click on general. We're going to get ourselves into the Bluetooth, which is right in the dead center of the screen. We're going to go through, we're going to turn it on, and ultimately it's going to sync up and say these are the different devices available in the room. You pick what you want. You pick any one of these. Um, they're not all around. This is just a screenshot from my phone. But ultimately, you sync up, which is called pairing. So you're pairing your cell phone to an actual tower, at which point you have that same usability that I was talking about with all the XLR outs. So you can still have one master Bluetooth model. Everybody that I showed this to said, oh, why would I buy any of those standard units if I can buy all Bluetooth units? Well, let me answer that. I'm probably going to produce, I'm going to say 10% of Bluetooth models compared to the other models because you're not going to use Bluetooth on multiple products. You need it in one. You still take that system link feature, which is going to be available on each one of the Bluetooth models, and link it out to a non-Bluetooth model, thus saving yourself $50 on each one of those towers. So, it's not that I, you know, I'm not here to try and sell, you know, obviously, if you want to buy all Bluetooth, great, but you don't have to. If anything, you're just pissing away money at that point. So why Bluetooth? A uh, couple of reasons, especially specific to this industry and specific to this channel. Um, ceremony receiving lines, they've moved. Uh, you know, if you're doing an outdoor wedding, all of a sudden you have a wedding in this location, you have your dance stage set up at this location, and a receiving line somewhere over here. Cocktail hour, same thing. You're going to have cocktail hour at the bar, you might want to play music, but it doesn't have to be dance music. And then finally, the guy with the hit song on his phone, and that's usually the best man who gives the really bad speech that you guys were talking about earlier. So, long and short, if you look at that wedding image that we're, we're pushing up on our website, <laughs> I had to. I had to. Um, <laughs> so you take a look at that. If you could run just 150 that needed um, Bluetooth capability, so a 50 watt tower to handle the voice aspect for 50 people that are in an outdoor event, you can do that without ever having to tear down your regular rig and move everything. You're carrying 15 pounds out to hide behind the tree so that everybody can hear it. And there you have wireless mic capabilities to plug in with each one of those three channels. Your, you know, basically your, uh, your priest, your deacon, whatever uh, you want, is ultimately giving a service the speaker's never seen. You can have the rest of your other system set up. You never have to touch it, never have to tear down wires. That's what it was designed for. Like I said, the cocktail hour, same thing. It's in a different location than where the actual party's gonna be. And yes, that's Steve Bishop, obviously from The Wedding Singer, because Ultimately, you guys know you have tens of thousands of songs, and somebody always wants to hear that one song that you do not have in your playlist, but he's got it on his phone, right? So now all of a sudden, all you have to do is flip on the Bluetooth and say, play it. And then the really drunk guy who's asking you to play that song on his phone is happy and leaves you alone for the rest of the night. I think that's, that's basically what we're after. So, um, one thing we haven't really jumped into, but I'll do that now. Um, price points on these are very competitive, and like I said, it's because we own the manufacturer. I don't have to go to a third-party source. I don't have to go spend six months and prototype. Uh, ultimately, I can come out with a product in 60 days, 75 days, 
uh, and that's from the mechanical engineer drawings down to the rapid prototyping to uh, all the FCC testing, ETL testing. We do everything right because we've been doing it for a very, very long time. So that means we're not going to cut corners. Uh, you're not going to have issues with the product. We have completely, uh, I guess you could say, populated the U.S. with service centers that know how to handle our products. Uh, so if there is ever a product under warranty that has an issue, which I don't think is going to happen, you can rest assured that you can take it in somewhere where we or that uh, sponsored service center ultimately will take care of the issue. Uh, each one of the products has a three-year warranty. Uh, most of that warranty work can be done in-house because we have all the engineers and then we have techs. So there's your price points. Um, as you can see, you know the little 50-watt guy is $1.99, the 100-watt is 349 the sub is 349 So pair together a sub and a tower, uh, $699 a side. So ultimately that means you can have what I brought to the show for less than $1,500, which is pretty damn good. So where to find us? Uh, right there. So we're kind of new. I said that at the beginning of the presentation. Um, we're out here looking for information. That's all there is to it. You know, we're new to the industry. We're new to the channel. Uh, we're not new to the MI industry. We think we have a really good handle on that. Um, ultimately, what you're seeing here is a website, DJN, discjockeynews.dompro.com. Um, if you come see me, I'll show you what that is. It's basically a website that you guys can log into if you choose to purchase any of the products. We ship them for free right to your location. Uh, so that's just a place where you can get more info on the product if I skip anything here that you really want to know. Website itself, dawnproaudio.com. It's live. You can go there and take a look today. Um, and then Facebook and Twitter. So I think that might be it. Um, so consider the application. Obviously, you guys have to do that every time you take a new gig. Um, indoor event, outdoor event. You know, obviously, imagine the possibilities once you incorporate something like Bluetooth to that model. And now we're done. Thank you. Business cards. We are going to be doing our first drawing and give away some of the things that were up here, which are all there. So grab your cards. Rob has got the box, wherever your Rob is. Way back there. Hit Rob on your way out. He's got the box back at one of those little high top tables back there. We will be back at 1 o'clock. We've got about an hour and a half for lunch. They've got a couple of spots on site, I believe, to have something to eat. Check that out if you want to. All of America is not too far away.